Okay, so this video is going to be pretty much detailing like why Mighty Number no. Nine for the PS4 is not really as bad as some people think it is, and the reason why a lot of people hate it is because you know it, it, it started off as a kick fun, a kick fundraiser Kickstarter, and what ended up happening was the original creator Mega Man or Rock Man in Japanese essentially stated that you know he wanted to make another Mega Man game but he couldn't because people said it wasn't, like, they raised like $4 million and then, like, most of that money wasn't used towards the game. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest 100% game of all time, but, but here's the thing that a lot of people have to understand. You know, do you really honestly think that the creator, because I don't know his name off the top of my head, even though I know Japanese, do you really think that he wouldn't have wanted to make a Mega Man game? See, the reason why, and I think this is, and I still want people to know this, you know, a lot of people have to understand that the reason why that game wasn't what they wanted it to be was because Capcom owns the rights to the Mega Man series. And you might think, well, what does that have to do with this? Well, it has a lot to do with it, actually. Because if, like, for example, you know, if you play Mega Man, any of the Mega Man games, we all know what Mega Man looks like. So it was heavily implied that they try to make a Mega Man-like game. But the problem was, though, you know, it wasn't... I mean, okay, you, you know... It, 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 certain parts were easy, like the obvious weak points. I mean, I can understand that. And the fact that they didn't use all the money they raised because they raised $4 million for it. I can understand that. But what I think a lot of people have to understand, though, is that when the Mega Man games really came out, I mean, it really wasn't... You know, it, it just it, they just didn't use the money because the projects that they were they were working on, the technology wasn't really... Like, it, it really didn't cost that much to make a Mega Man game. I mean, Mega Man games were huge in Japan, and they still are to this day, but the problem is that you have to understand is, at the same time, though, some of those games are pretty fucking expensive when you think about it. You know, I mean, I mean, just getting a solid copy of Mega Man X3, for the English copy at least, not Rock Man, but, you know, it's like, it's like almost $300 for just a cartridge. And, I mean, that game is worth that price, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, that's a lot of money for one game, man. But, you know... I mean, I'm sure you could, you could probably get it cheaper than on the virtual console than actually getting an actual Super Nintendo copy. But, or a repo, you could probably pay someone to make a solder a different one together for you. A custom made cartridge a lot cheaper, probably like 50, 60 bucks, but hey, at least it works. <laughs> but anyways, the whole reason why Mighty Number no. 9 was, you know, kind of gets a bad rep is because people look at the reviews and take them way too seriously, but, you know, but that's what a lot of people have to understand. You know, Capcom would outright sue him if they knew that he made another game that was in the Mega Man series, because the problem with Capcom is that, you know, they were the publishing company that made the Mega Man games. They were the company that owned the rights to it, but they weren't the ones that designed it though. It was just the guys that at Capcom, the designers, but because they got rid of him, they took his rights away too because he was the one that technically owned it. Well, I mean, before Capcom stepped in and said, hey, you know, we, we technically own this still because we're the ones that published it, we funded you the money, so technically we're the ones that, you know, so it was, you know, Capcom owns the Mega Man games as well as the Mega Man X, Mega Man Battle Network, it, you know, all the Mega Man games, etc. But that's why could not make another, I, I just can't remember his name on the top of my head, could not make another Mighty Number no. 9 game that looked like Mega Man because, you know, Capcom would sue him then and essentially the whole project would be shut down and, you know, we, we all know where that goes. But that's my point, though, I'm trying to make, though, is a lot of people have to understand that these games, if you, if you really take into consideration, you know, some of these games... Yes, you're right. All these games could be better. All video games could be better. But you have to understand, the only reason why some games are not as good as they should be is usually because of some interference by whether copyright or maybe lack of funds. But, I mean, in this case, the guy, they raised like almost $4 million. But what I think a lot of people have to also understand is that Mega Man games in general usually aren't... Like, they're overlooked in some aspects to the point where... Like, th th this is where it gets confusing to explain. Just just think of it like this. You know, you know, yeah, the original Mega Man games would probably be better than Mighty Nine, but the way I look at it, I mean, at least they made another game in the series. I mean, you know, it, I mean, you can beat that game. It's not, like, impossible. I mean, I, I never had any trouble with it. You know, I mean, some parts are hard, but, you know, that's good. That's good that some levels are hard, because, you know, at least... I mean, at least when you think about it, you know, uh... You know, it's 
something, it's still like going around shooting and blasting things like Mega Man games. Well, remind you, every boss has got an obvious weakness, sure, but, you know, but the way I look at it, though, you know, I mean, it could be worse. That could be like they never made another Mega Man game. Like, I mean, yeah, you, you get what I'm saying. But, and who knows, you know, maybe maybe they'll make another one. Maybe they'll make another, an entirely new series that was like Mega Man, but even better. You know, I mean, if they can, you know, just remember people, if they can do it once, they can do it again. But then again, you know, the guy who made another Mega Man game, forget the guy's name, you know, he could go off to make his own. It, it's like, think of it like Final Fantasy. You know, the creator of Final Fantasy. You know, the guy who pretty much founded Squaresoft. You know, when he created Final Fantasy, he thought he was never going to make another Final Fantasy game again because that was going to be his last game. But, you know, but ironically, he made so much money doing it. And then eventually he retired and, well, technically he left Squaresoft, later Square Enix. And then, you know, he started his own legacy, started his own video game franchise. And there's some games I still have to play that I'm still trying to get my hands on somehow that, you know, you know, my point is, you know, just because people live a legacy now and then they leave it behind, and I don't mean just after death, but I mean like, you know, you know, you had the guy who was creating like all, you know, during his legacy at Capcom, you know, he made all these Mega Man games. And then all of a sudden, you know, he left because he wasn't happy with the way he was being treated. That doesn't mean that he couldn't make another game. Like, I mean, a Mega Man-like game. Like, okay, maybe Mighty Number no. 9 is like, could have been way better, sure. But the way I look at it, you know, it's still a game that, you know, people could have enjoyed. And I think the only reason why a lot of people look at it the wrong way is because they kind of looked, and they just kind of saw, like, so many people hating it for what it really was. But really, you know, I mean, it's still a game, and, you know, the game designers didn't make it, so... You know, I mean, we should at least be happy they made another one. But at the same time, though, here's another way of looking at it. And i got to think for a second here because I just forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, now I remember. If you remember in the video game industry, Star Ocean 5, when it first came out, a lot of people were complaining. You see, here's the problem with video games nowadays. You know, people often say it's the game designers, but at the same time, I think it's the gamers, too. Because, like, you know, some people really like to jump to conclusions, and people really seem to forget what they say before they really actually realize it. Like, I'll give you an example. You, you know, it's like when Star Ocean 5 came out, a lot of people were saying that it got bad reviews because it was a short game. But what a lot of people were doing was they were skipping the side quests, and they forgot that all Star Ocean games really aren't, like, over 100 hours long. I mean, unless you play them over and over again, sure. But, I mean, one playthrough of a Star Ocean game really isn't going to take you anywhere between maybe 40 to 20 hours to beat. kind of sounds like a short game, yes. But, you know, when you really think about it, Star Ocean games really aren't... Like, they're not, like, 100% long, but, like, they're fairly, they can be fairly difficult, but at the same time, they're real easy games to figure out. Like, I mean, it's not about, it's really more of, like, a story, it hands it to you, and then you go into, like, fights and all that, and then you, you beat it. But, I mean, like, you know, but my point is, you know, why would that be a short game when you think about people beating speedruns? I mean, like, you know, if, if people, I mean... You know, maybe the first playthrough seems short, sure, but I mean, like, if you keep playing the game over and over and over again, I mean, of course you're going to beat the game in, like, less than three hours, you know? I mean, look at all the people that played Ocarina of Time back in the day, and, you know, I mean, even though this was The Legend of Zelda, sure, but, you know, look at the, the legendary, legendary Zelda series, you know, people play those games, and so many people still play them, even Mario games, I mean, look at speedrunners, people find ways to beat some of these games, like, so fast, and... You know, it's like, well, if you keep playing the games, I mean, you're probably just, I mean, unless you take your time with it, it's probably going to be a very fast playthrough of the game. You'll still play, you'll still have good memories with it, but, you know, I think what a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, if you think about it, all video games can be short, you know, based on, I, I don't mean just with glitches, but I mean, like, you know, you just beat the game once, and then, boom, there you go, you're done, you know, now you can play it again if you want, but it's like, that's entirely up to you, and... You know, you take your time with it, and, you know, it's like every video game is, well, it, 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 there's a beginning and there's an end. And, you know, unless they make another one, well, it's just up to you to interpret it. I'll give you another example. Look at Chrono Trigger. You could beat that game in, like, less than five hours if you know what you're doing. Um, you know, um, I'll give you another example. Uh, the Illusion of Gaia. You could beat that game in three hours. Um... That's another example, you know, look at, look at, uh, what was that game called, um, ah, oh, damn, what was that game called, oh yeah, Secret of Mana, Secret of Mana 1, 2, and 3, and, well, 2 and 3, and then there was a Secret of Evermore, and, you know, um, you know, I, I mean, if you think about it, you know, every video game is a certain age, or some games are longer than others, and I mean this with every game, but even Mighty Number no. 9, though, you know, if you think about it, 
you know, just because people play a game now and they think it sucks doesn't mean that it really does or over time it sucks. I mean, just maybe people just haven't looked at reasons to really... Maybe, like, there's a whole fan base out there for the series. I mean, you know, every game's got its own fan base, you know, whether for jokes or, you know, maybe just everybody's different. But at the same time, maybe people just don't really realize why the game, like, suffered the fate that it did if there really was something wrong here, you know, if that makes sense. And what I think also a lot of people have to take into consideration is that you know, it wasn't that the game designers try to piss the fans off by making the decisions that they do, it's just because they were limited by other people. Again, Capcom pretty much was the whole reason why Mighty Number no. 9 didn't look the way it did. And, you know, just to recap, I mean, that all by itself could probably piss some people off, but it wouldn't be the creator's fault, it would just be the reality of what he's faced with. I mean, hey, at least he wanted to make another game. So, my point is this, you know, life is unfair because other people make it unfair. And really, if we, if, if you really want a reason why don't be mad at the game designers. Be really more mad at Capcom for, well, just kind of being ignorant towards the Mega Man fan base. So think of it like that, people. Don't hate Mighty Number no. 9 for, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not like a fanboy towards it, but I mean, I played it, and I, I mean, I thought it was cool. But at the same time, though, I mean, I probably would probably say the original Mega Man games were probably better, but, you know, but it's cool to see that they wanted to make another game in the series, and, you know, even if it wasn't the greatest game of all time, but, you know, and again, you know, every game has flaws, and every game is exaggerated. Like, I mean, like, think of it like this. You're always going to find games that are going to have positive exaggerations and negative exaggerations. So, people are going to praise a game more, but that's fine, you know, because everybody's different, and everybody likes things differently. So, you know, that's just how it works. And you know what? That'll never go away. That's just how humanity is. That's how every single living organism is that's not perfect. Because as long as, I mean, you could have people that exaggerate things low or high. So, you know, what do you guys think about Mighty Number no. 9? You know, did you guys beat it? Did you guys, what did you guys think about it? Because honestly, I didn't think it was as terrible as people think it was. But at the same time, though, yeah, it definitely could have been better. But then again, you could say that with every game, you know. So again, like, comment, rate, subscribe, favorite, share this video. And just think about it, people, you know. It's not always the game designer's fault, but rather the limitations of other people that they faced in their realities or their past at one point that still to this day gave them those options and limitations as well.